Hello everyone and welcome to the second video in this course, uh, the OCR computing course. Today we're looking at topic number two, which is all about the CPU. Very important topic, make sure you learn everything in this video, rewatch it if necessary, and if you're revising on a schedule, make sure you um, you may want to uh, speed up the video using uh, the option on YouTube. So um, let's look up what CPU stands for. Obviously CPU is an acronym, it's not actually a word, and it stands for Central Processing Unit. And those three words words sort of describe what it does. It's basically the hardware within a computer whose sole purpose, the purpose of a CPU is to process data. Pure and simple processing data is what it's designed to do. And it's often likened to a brain, so quite a simplistic model of the CPU, model being just a way of describing it. A simplistic model of a CPU is as the brain, so if you look at all the components in a computer and map them up to a, um, a human body part the brain is the most likely one for the CPU because it sort of it controls what goes on in the computer but it does this by processing data and instructions so other hardware which we'll look at hardware in a more detailed video but um, your motherboards like I would say like a skeleton um, uh, sound card maybe like your ears etc so quite a simplistic model we're going into more detail so it's also important to realize that the CPU isn't just a processor so the problem is and you may notice this in this topic because I may unintentionally use some words interchangeably um, definitions such as CPU and processor and um, words such as these they are quite ambiguous ambiguous meaning that have got lots of meanings because these words were sort of coined um, in the latter half of the 20th century and as technology has developed as computer scientists have sort of understood things more as, as things get more complex um, the definitions have changed and they've got more refined but that still means that um, they're not they're not watertight and a lot of things in computer science and computing um, aren't watertight they have lots of meanings people different people say different things for each each um, word so that's that's actually an advantage for the student because examiners may be slightly more lenient with how you use your technical terms um, so yeah the CPU you can almost think of it as a CPU being a unit and it contains a processor in fact it contains lots of different types of um, I won't go into it, but it contains lots of different sort of blocks that do certain things. So you've also got something called cache, which we'll look at in the next couple of slides. Um, so it's not just a processor, it's several um, things rolled into one. And for processing data, so its fu sole function relies on three operations that it can conduct. So the first one is, and it, by the way, this works in a cycle. People may describe it as a processing cycle. Um, the first one being fetching. So firstly, um, whenever it receives a request for something, so for example, if I on my desktop I've got a Microsoft Word um, shortcut if I double click that um, the CPU will register this and it will go and search and look for the instruction that's been saved in the memory important to realize that it does interact with the memory here so it will go and find this instruction stored in the memory and then it will have to decode the instruction that it finds um, Decoding meaning that it sort of sorts them into parts. So often, when you in an exam get a complex problem, you often in your mind or maybe even physically you split it up into different parts, meaning that it's actually simpler to work out. So, for example, a complex instruction, maybe not so much opening a Word document, um, it will sort of split it up into these different blocks in the CPU. So each block is sort of designed to do a specific function, and it will. Um, yeah, it will split it up and each one will sort of work on it. Then it executes it. Executing in computer science means to run. doesn't mean anything more sinister. just means to run something. Um, so the final stage is to execute it. All the um, different um, decoded parts will go together and the instruction will be processed. It will be run. Um, so for example, uh, if, if the um, initial fetching of the instruction is to do a mathematical calculation even something simple like 4 plus 5 um, the execution will result in 9 being um, uh, outputted from the CPU if this makes sense, if it doesn't make sense uh, go over it um, yeah some of it's a bit difficult to explain so maybe read over it but um, this is actually what a CPU looks like um, in a computer often it'll be it'll be sat on a motherboard it'll have a large heat sink on it usually to cover it up because it gets quite hot um, so yeah it'll comprise of these different units um, okay so I've just written a few points just to make sure that I don't miss over anything it's important to appreciate that the CPU does actually interact with other items in the computer such as the memory like I mentioned before it um, uh, what was the word I used? Uh, fetches. 
you know, mind blank there. It fetches um, instructions from the memory, so it does interact with other um, hardware within the computer. We'll look at memory in more detail later, but um, yeah. So this this means that the CPU is actually not necessarily the only processor in the computer. Um, there are actually processes processes in other hardware, such as a graphics or sound card. Um, again, we'll look at those in more detail later, but. Um, those processor cores in the graphics and sound cards um, focus on those specific roles that don't necessarily interact with other hardware as much as the CPU does. The CPU is literally um, the integral part of that computer, it's in the middle of everything, you can look at it that way, hence the central um, nature in its name. So we're going to look at three characteristics of a CPU, um, first one being clock speed. So the clock speed of a CPU is... Um, uh, well, uh, yeah, so um, the CPU does need a certain amount of cycles to execute instructions. So for each instruction, in to for each instruction, and get my words out, um, a certain amount of cycles need to be completed. Um, so the faster these cycles can be completed, the more instructions can be executed per second, and that is the clock speed. So. Um, you can think of a cycle being a complete circle. You don't necessarily need to know what a cycle is. It literally just means, um, yeah, I, I probably won't go into what a cycle is. It's a bit more complicated. Um, you just need to know that the clock speed is however many cycles um, can be completed per second. They're usually measured in gigahertz. And that's also an important um, thing to realize. They also are measured in gigahertz nowadays um, because can because processors are so fast. So um, a little more of a, a visual example of what I mean here. So um, if you have two two processors, one's got a fast clock speed, the top one here has got a fast clock speed, the bottom's got a slow clock speed, um, the instruction going from A to B will be completed faster with a faster clock speed. Sort of common sense, so this also results in a higher clock speed, meaning that a greater amount of performance because a higher clock speed means that more uh, instructions can be executed per second um, although this is on an individual instruction basis so yeah generally increased clock speed equals increased performance so also need to look at um, another characteristic of a CPU and that is number of cores so um, a, pro a CPU can have multiple processors called cores so you can think of a core being a processor um, like I say a, a processor makes up a CPU a CPU isn't a, mm, a CPU sort of isn't a processor so um, here's sort of a diagram so if this is a uh, a microprocessor, a microprocessor just means it's all on one chip um, this little green box is a microprocessor, you've got four cores here and they each um, are separate but they interact together to form the CPU and basically these cores allow multiple instructions to be executed simultaneously so instead of running one instruction at a time each core can run one instruction at a time which means at any given time four cores can be run in this case if it's five cores five cores uh, five instructions could be run if it was two cores two instructions could be run um, which means that if a program is optimized for this parallel computing um, basically some programs won't be able to um, make use of these four cores they'll only work through one core but some programs um, such as a um, intensive video game or vid uh, video editing editing's editing software um, will often be designed so that these four cores can be all be used simultaneously um, which means that more cores is better basically more cores means an increase in performance um, for multiple instructions um, so to put this in context a bit um, this, is, this is a question taken from a AQA paper actually but it, it's, it works with this specification um, so it, it asks you basically to explain which computer will run instructions quicker um, a quad core processor with a clock speed of 2 gigahertz or a single core processor with a clock speed of 4.1 gigahertz so um, the uh, answers I came up with for this um, you can say either actually quite crucially you could say either I would tend to say B PCB um, but PCA you could say because it's got four cores um, meaning quad quad is obviously four it's got four cores which allow four instructions to be executed at the same time that's all you really need to say to get these three marks um, these four cores allow four instructions to be executed simultaneously or you could say PCB and I would generally if I was in the exam I'd write PCB um, this is because not all programs can handle these parallel computations not every program will be able to do this so um, instructions won't be run as quickly for some programs um, and the clock speed of B is higher than A meaning that as each instruction can be processed more than twice as quickly you can see this clock speed is twice as big as this one um, so each instruction will be processed twice as quickly 
I put some context a bit. Um, quite simple uh, sort of questions you get on this topic, but um, important to understand. So um, the CPU cache. This is a slightly um, harder topic because you may not have heard of cache before. Uh, cache, and you can see I, I, I pronounce it cache. That's how you should pronounce it. I always used to start off by calling it cache. That's not how you pronounce it. it sounds a bit stupid if you say cache. It's actually cache. Um, so cache in computing is a type of memory um, that stores frequently accessed instructions and data so that they can be quickly accessed. Basically cache memory is very fast to access. So a small amount you have a small amount of cache in your computer um, in various different things, browser cache, um, processor cache and uh, hard drive cache, different types of cache. Um, you have them so that quickly, um, frequently access instructions can be accessed um, quicker than they would be if they were stored elsewhere. So a um, a web browser does also use cache, like I mentioned. So for example, a commonly accessed web website such as Google. So if you access Google a lot, which I do, um, Google will have its details stored within um, a browser cache. So if whenever you request it, it will load almost instantaneously. You may want to try this. Your Google page may load really fast because you access it so often and it's stored in this fast type of memory. Um, so, like I say, a processor has a cache, and these contain small blocks of data that are frequently accessed in order to save time. So, um, more cache basically means a greater performance, um, and this is because a larger cache means more data can be stored, which can later be accessed quickly, which helps for long-term performance. Um, so, um, the, the cache uh, is, it, instead, of, instead of having to interact with memory, process has to interact with cache which is right next to it and that is obviously quicker to access um, and the, the memory is designed so that it's really quick to access so um, more if you have a large cache more data can be stored in it um, which improves performance over the long term so um, I've talked very quickly in this video I have to have some water um, there's a lot to cover like I say like I said at the start you may want to go over it um, I hope I've been as clear as possible. Any questions, please feel free to ask me. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.